Yet for all this time, we had this mathematics and this belief of physics that was kind of turned out to be wrong yes. when quantum mechanics came along. Is it inevitable that the same is going to happen to quantum mechanics? And we're yes. going to find out that was just a stopgap. Well, the thing is, you know, physicists and mathematicians have a very different sense of truth. So in, in math, we know when, when I say three is a prime number, I mean, I'm pretty certain about it. It's absolute truth. And, 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 and there, is, there is mathematical proof is rigorous and clear. In physics, we have to measure things, and we always do it with a certain precision. Now, if I talk about the, you know, the quantum theory of electrons, some of the most careful measurements in all of the sciences have been made there, like up to 12 decimals. But of course, the 13 decimal might contain a surprise. And in mathematics, if you like, compute uh, the number pi, you get an infinite number of decimals. There's no uncertainty at all. So, Physics is always this progressions of approximations to the truth, uh, which is some very foreign to mathematics. So we, it's like a train that makes many, many stops. And in at every stop, we have a different kind of mathematical language. They, they fit together, but it's a different language. Um, and they're all true. And there's beautiful mathematics, but there's this kind of progression that slowly we're approximating the perhaps would be the ultimate truth in physics. Uh, we, we haven't reached the point where I can write down an equation and say, this is the equation of the universe. Uh, it's, it's only approximate. So uh, it's, uh, it's a safe bet that quantum theory, as we know it right now, is an intermediate phase. And at some point it uh, will go and, and will be transformed in something different. So physics is a little bit like art. You know, you have these... Uh, various kind of stages. You have the, the realism, and then there's impressionism, and then there's abstract art, and then conceptual. We, we always move to a, to a next uh, phase. Perhaps a long time ago, observations could be made, and then mathematicians and people would come in and help explain them. But for a long time now, it feels like the mathematicians are leading the way yes. and coming up with ideas and then hoping maybe 50 years later some observation will be made to back that up. Yes. Is that the way it's always going to be now? Is there any observation that could be made by an astronomer or an observational physicist that's going to, that's going to confound the mathematicians and send them to the drawing board? Or is it always the mathematicians leading the way now? With no, ideas? I think there, is, there are uh, opportunities for uh, fundamental measurements in physics that uh, could upset, uh, for instance, this framework of quantum theory. Uh, you know, we do very precise measurements in, uh, in particle physics. Uh, at some point, we could find a violation. For instance, we could find that the, say, the rules of probability don't work or are different. Uh, we are uh, observing uh, the very, very early universe. Um, and so there could be some very amazing surprises there. Uh, we're basically looking at this kind of little pixels of space. Um, just two years ago, we saw the first real signal of colliding black holes. And in fact, that signal, by analyzing it, pe people are really able to reconstruct the curvature of space. And so we could be that, in some sense, that's not confirming what we think that space is. So I think there are uh, many uh, reasons for surprises. But I think, actually, for mathematics, the real surprises will come that perhaps different, uh, I would almost say a different vo vocabulary uh, appears. Um, math is, is a wonderful language, uh, but there were always words are being added to it. And uh, you know, there was a time, you know, the old Greeks, they didn't know calculus, so they couldn't take the third derivative of a function. Um, you know, probability was a painful delivery too. So there are always new words, new rules being invented. And uh, although we believe, I think most mathematicians believe these have kind of eternal value, exploring the mathematical universe is you know, an exciting journey too. And I think there are many parts of that mathematical universe uh, where even the concepts and ideas are, are unknown. And I think what physics or the sciences in general might do is provide completely different ideas. Another question that has been coming into my, my mind almost since we started talking, and I know it's a bit of a cliché question, I don't ask it all the time, but it seems so relevant to what we're talking about here, and that is this old question of whether or not mathematics is something that 
humans invent yes. or humans discover. Yeah. And it never seems more relevant than when we're talking now. Do you, do you, I'm sure you've been asked it. Do you have an opinion on it? Uh, I, I think it is really discovering. Uh, it's out there. Uh, there's a, a structure that's you know, very deep. Um, and the remarkable thing, I think, is that it's also uh, it's, it's a language, it's a structure that also is underpinning reality. You know, I could easily imagine you know, uh, mathematics as just pure thought and with an austere beauty. But I think the big surprise is that if we delve into the fundamental structure of reality, it's mathematics in the end which is the only language, the only sets of concepts that make us understand. So it has this, uh, you know, we clearly can think of mathematical objects that you can't find in reality. You know, I can think of an object in a hundred dimensions, won't be here. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it seemed to be the preferred language of nature. And that of course was something that now Galileo already wrote about the book of nature that you're reading and it's written in the language of mathematics. So, it has this uh, kind of uh, extra strength uh, that it's, it's, so it's so universal that it's also capturing our universe. Now, I'm a theoretical physicist and some of my colleagues believe that uh, our universe is one of many and other universes might have different dimensions of space, different laws, different rules. Uh, but I think they all agree that whatever that different universe is, it's still one based on mathematics. So it's, it's even more than kind of universal. Just imagine, just trying to imagine these two huge objects, what they're doing to the matter, to the space-time around it. As they, and the space-time must be going, oh my god, what's happening here? And it's flipping up and down, up and down. And they're just generating these waves are beginning to propagate out. 350 kilometers <laughs> is about the distance what to London. Then you've got two 30 solar mass black holes sort of orbiting one another in this region. And so they're going at a totally different...